Welcome back to the Star Trek Critic, where every episode is analyzed for any errors that made it through and graded like a school project. Today's episode is Obsession. Kirk battles a smoke monster from Lost, making up for when he panicked in his fight with it several years ago. And now it's time to take points away from this show. As usual, the first point is lost because the captain and first officer beam down together. One of them should always be on the ship. Obviously, they didn't watch The Next Generation. But you refuse to let him beam down to Altair 3. The next point is lost. Since it's pretty obvious, this piece he's cutting off has already been detached. Spock let out a really good fart and tries to explain it away to the captain as pollen in the air during growing season. Kirk remembers the same smell years ago. Spock was probably on the mission with him that time and had chili for lunch. The next point is lost since they are goofing around on a strange planet and need to meet the Yorktown in less than 8 hours to transfer some vaccines. Anything could happen. So does dichoronium naturally smell like honey? Or does the smoke smell like honey and have dichoronium in it? Look closely, Leslie is going with them. And Spock doesn't believe he can find dichoronium outside the lab. I think I saw this volcano on the Brady Bunch. Look closely, Leslie is killed by the cloud. Only Rizzo survives. If Leslie is dead, why is he in 30 more Trark episodes? So, minus one point. And this cloud sucks out red blood cells like the other creature sucked out the salt. The way this captain's log is worded, it says all personnel have been evacuated off the planet, which makes it sound like there were more landing parties around. Rizzo is going to survive, but the next point is lost due to the monitor in sickbay, which has the same dirt on it as the monitor in Kirk's quarters, the conference room, or anywhere else. And the option of sending the Yorktown straight to Theta-7 with the vaccines instead was never brought up, so minus one point. This comment from Kirk is the big red flag that alerts McCoy and Spock. Kirk is convinced that this is the creature he dealt with on the Farragut 11 years ago, and Rizzo says the smell was like honey, which is a connection. Nurse Chapel notices something is up. Spock can't find anything on the planet. This is the first episode where something like a cloud is considered intelligent. Spock loses a point here since gold changing to lead would be an atomic change, not a molecular change. And this time I am going to take a point for the Tribolith doors. It's an elevator. There should be two sets of doors, not just the one. The next point is lost since Captain Kirk doesn't know his own crew. How would he not know Garavik since he worked with his father on the Farragut? And Rizzo died. Shout out to McCoy and Chapel for their hard work. Aww. Now we're going back to the surface to look for the smoke monster. Spock said dichoronium only existed in labs, but thanks to the molecular shift theory, he was still able to search for it on the planet. Watch closely from the time Garavik turns around and sees the cloud to the time he fires. It's only a split second. And two more red shirts are gone. This guy is hanging on right now, the other one died. The next point is lost by Garavik, who says the cloud was 60 cubic meters in size, but fired when it was 20 yards away from him. McCoy wants to know if the thing is alive. Kirk is wrong about this. You saw the video, Garavik paused for only a split second. But Kirk is suffering from PTSD right now, and is trying to place his guilt on Garovic. Is Garovic upset because he was confined to quarters, or because of the loss of his shipmates? We will never know. The next point is lost since there is no cut in the carpet. That's going to make a mess when the tripper lift takes off. This is foreshadowing. I'm sure the cloud is going to find that vent soon. Everybody's upset about the delay in the vaccines. And I'm getting a little tired of my senior officers conspiring against me. They're like, did he just say that? Okay, if McCoy is doing an autopsy, where is the body? This is one of the rare times where Spock and McCoy are in agreement on something, which is Kirk's obsession over the cloud. In a nutshell, 11 years ago, the cloud killed 200 of the Farragut crew, and Kirk feels his delay in firing at it was the cause, and Spock and McCoy are concerned about him. This is much like a Captain Ahab storyline. Good news, this scene is done very well. One of the best in the series. Which means most of it is cut out of this video since there is nothing to trash. Be sure to watch the real episode and tell the CBS CID I sent you so I'll get less copyright claims. But it looks like Kirk's hunch is right. They are in hot pursuit. Chekhov looks behind him to make sure Kirk is still there, like the captain's chair doesn't travel with the helm. Did they ever call the Yorktown and say they won't make it, or just leave the Yorktown hanging? There is no evidence they called the Yorktown again, so minus one point. And this little scene shows that Kirk is listening to his crew. 
It's not really Nurse Chapel's job to bring food. She's actually acting as the ship's counselor right now. And why is Galovic addressing her as Christine? Maybe they know each other more than we know about. It makes you wonder. Yeehaw! The creature is slowing down. Maybe it wants to fight. Just what is she feeding him? It looks like green soup and weird fruit. And what is Magnification 1? Isn't everything just right out your window, Magnification 1? And now I want to know what Sublight 1 quarter speed means. Kirk should know that shooting at a cloud is a waste of time. He has been holding his survivor's guilt for years for no reason. Unfortunately, he never got to talk it out with Counselor Troy. Did you ever notice though, when Troy went to talk to someone, they just told her to mind her own business, and then they went to talk to Guinan. And Scotty has a weird way of holding on during a blast. This is the proof that Cloud is alive because it turned to attack. This comment could be taken in more than one way. Has anyone been doing a red shirt body count for this show? They're dropping like flies. Scotty says the Cloud entered the ship, attacked two guards, and McCoy says one of them died. The first three all died, and then one died on the second trip. And the other, as far as we know, is still in ICU. So I think that is five. And McCoy is pretty upset about it, as you can see. This isn't good, since it cut off their air supply. Ironically, Spock tells Kirk that he shouldn't feel guilty about the phaser, and Kirk tells him to mind his own business, just like he would to Counselor Troy. Spock's like, well, shit, I tried. So he's gonna try his counseling on Garifik instead. The next point is lost here. After what Spock said to Kirk about the phaser going through the cloud, he should know he can't stop it with his bare hands. And Garifik, that's not a nice thing to say about your first officer. And the device in his hand is a real radiation detector. The next point is lost for this weak plot device. Spock, of course, has copper-based blood, which is why he's still alive. The writers made the audience panic that Spock was going to die, but had that magic easy way out. Did Spock fart again? Kirk's kind of rude about this. Kirk tells Garovic that he acted correctly and can return to duty. And he really didn't delay firing by that much. It was just a split second, which you need to do to see what the cloud is doing, and most important, to make sure you don't hit your shipmates instead. One of those unusual comments. Kirk is convinced the creature is going back to Tycho 4, which is its home. That creature really gets around. It's about time they contact the Yorktown. But if they can't meet them in 48 hours, the Yorktown needs to just deliver the vaccines themselves. Spock is concerned on a cloud explosion. McCoy is, of course, worried about the vaccines. I guess the Yorktown is low on gas or something, so it can't make the trip itself. This is sad. The cloud is going home to breed, and they are going to kill it. So this is really just a science fiction grunion run. Why is Kirk asking Garofik for hemoplasm when McCoy is right next to him? McCoy's like, oh good, I hope I don't have to do any operations for the next six months. Also, Spock brings up a valid point. This one ounce of antimatter will rip away half the planet's atmosphere. This planet could belong to someone. Shouldn't they get permission first? There might be people on it, or some type of creature, or mining opportunities. So minus one point for blowing up a planet without anyone's permission. The next point is lost for beaming down antimatter. That's just too dangerous. It would have exploded when they rematerialized. They should have come down by shuttlecraft. And there should have been more than two of them in case something happened, so minus one more point. And if antimatter is so dangerous, why are they walking so casually when they carry it? They already lost the bait. The plasma should have been concealed, then exposed by a timer after they were safe and off the planet, using cameras instead of standing there all day, so minus one point. Kirk decides to be the hero since safe remote detonations are just out of the question. Minus one point for Garovic being stupid and assaulting the captain. He only did it since the networks won one fight scene in each episode. The fog is getting thicker. And Leon's getting larger. It's getting closer and closer. They're really waiting for the last second. The suspense is terrible. He, he's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. Yeah, it's cool. That's what she said. And this plot device is also used to keep the audience in suspense. They would have never done it this way in the real life. So minus one more point. This sounds a little icky. Pop cross circuits to A, then cross circuits to B. Scotty thanks heaven for their recovery, although Spock says it was his cross circuiting to B that saved the day. And McCoy loses a point since his pitchfork comment is out of date. Kirk tells Garavik, let's talk about your father sometime, and they all fly off to the Yorktown to save the planet. 
Leslie may have died, but don't panic, he will be back. Eddie Paskey is in 60 of the 79 Star Trek episodes. Not only did Jerry Ayers die as Rizzo, last year he died as a hurler he on Arena. He was also in Dynasty and The Bold and the Beautiful. And Stephen Brooks played Garavik. He spent some time on Days of Our Lives, but a heart attack stopped him early at the age of 57. And Obsession gets a final score of 79%. Thanks for viewing. Check out my videos and playlists. Click that like button, the share button, the subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon.